It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery. Buck Bait. Better the Hunt. Rebel Six Rubs and Seasonings. Easy Cut. Limb Walker Game Calls. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Packer Max. Fourth Arrow Camera Arms. Scent Blocker. Scent Lock. Copper John. And Stanislavski Release Aids. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin and having way too much fun tonight already before Absolutely. we even started. So. Even I got to remind you to right. record the show. So uh, before we get started tonight, though, let's uh, tell the good people how they can save a little money. Absolutely. There's nothing better than going out, helping the supporters of Up North Journal by supporting them. Uh, one of the first ones, Rebel Six Rub. Definitely, it's barbecue season. Uh, get out there. Uh, if you want to save 20% off your order, go over to rebelsixrubs.com and on your checkout, use the promo code North Journal and you'll get 20% off of there. I used some of the dragon dust this week on some. How'd that work out? On boiled eggs. Oh my gosh. Really? Good. Yes. I tell you what, uh, if you're looking to get start thinking about fall and, and getting over to Bucks Bait, seeing what they got on their lineup over there, they got some great stuff in there. They got some new stuff in their lineup from hand sanitizer to steaks, uh, reflective steaks to help you uh, track yardage. Uh, go over there and check out their website. You can get 20% off your order when you check out. Going over to buckbaits.com and then use the promo code Up North Journal. And as we drink it here in the cabin, nothing better than Hunter's Blend Coffee. And if you want to get 10% off your order, go over to huntersblendcoffee.com, use the promo code UNJ, and you'll get 10% off your order when you check out. And it's been a while since we talked to Slate over at Trips for Trade. People, with this COVID going on, trips getting canceled and whatnot. But if you want to start thinking about maybe trading for a trip, go over to tripsfortrade.com. If you use the promo code UPNORTH20, you'll get 20% off your yearly membership over there. Max it down to about 100 bucks, and then you can start trading to go somewhere and hunt. All right, we got that out of the way. Let's just go ahead and get into it tonight. Hey, Bobby Vargas, what is going on, my man? How you doing? I am doing well. How are you guys today? Hey, we're doing good. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out though. Dustin Geiger, first time watching, long time on the podcast. Thanks for tuning in. You couldn't have tuned in to a better episode than the one tonight because we got Bobby on from PSC. Bobby, what is going on in Tucson? Before the show, you you said you guys are a little hot out there. You guys got something brewing in the backyard over there, close to the factory? Well, it's inherently hot here in Tucson anyway. We've been over 100 degrees for several days now. A couple hundred nine degree days, but uh, right north of town, a uh, week and a half ago, a lightning strike uh, started a fire up in the mountain range there, and that thing just burned out of control. They had some emergency evacuations already just north of town, and um, luckily there were no structure fires. They were able to to stop it before it got into the residential areas, but it's still burning, still burning pretty good. Um, I don't know how how. Uh, um, far contained they have it, but uh, it's still going pretty good. But other than that, t- Tucson is just hot. I heard you guys saying something about getting down into the 40s overnight, and sometimes somewhere in the 30s, <laughs> somewhere up there. I'm so jealous about that. I, I, the only time I feel that is when I open the fridge to get a cold drink. <laughs> <laughs> go figure right yeah but you know what it's right the opposite for us in the winter you know because you're shoveling sunshine as you say all the time when we talk so you know we could use that in the winter a little pretty much right it's getting give and take that's right that's right you so. you give it you give it in in january when we see you and we'll give it back to you in june when we see you so we're, we're even <laughs> yeah well, right. I, have, I have to be in, in indianapolis most of the time in january so those those seven or eight days there is enough for me Right, yeah, because it's it's never warm that time of year in Indy. It's always a, a treacherous trip, either coming down or going back for us for ATA. It's I tell you, although this year wasn't too bad. I think we had some pretty decent weather this year. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't too bad. If I remember right, I want to say there were a couple of days during the show that it was colder down here in Tucson than it was up there for us. Yeah, it was crazy cool. thunderstorms and stuff like that going on. If I remember right, so uh, you know. Uh, you talk about crazy stuff going on. I mean, right now, things across the United States is, you know, it's a little wild. But, you know, we got the COVID thing. Has there been any early word yet about ATA 2021 with COVID or We've not? been having meetings with ATA. We just had another one last Tuesday, as a matter of fact, or Tuesday before last. Um, they Over the last several months, they've been pushing back our booth selection date, usually by 
uh, Mark, we've already picked our booth space and we're making uh, making a lot of plans for the show, but that's right when the whole COVID shutdown started happening. So booth selection dates kept getting pushed back and pushed back, but we finally settled on uh, July 7th is our booth selection date. Um, the dates for the show are set and still set. Um, all, they're, all they've been telling us is they're going to play it by ear between now and then to see if, if it's going to happen. But as of this moment, the 2021 ATA show is on and will be there. Good deal. I, I hope that we're able to, to get to see and spend some time with you again this year, this coming year. Uh, hopefully we can put the, all this bad stuff behind us, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to get through this year. We're not even halfway through it yet. And, and with all this crazy stuff that's going on, um, I hope that we have some resolution soon and, and we can put all this behind us and, and get back to living normal life again. Yeah, I know that they're starting some uh, archery tournaments around the United States. We're starting to see some of that. The, the only tournament that I've been able to is one against myself in the backyard. Uh, when I get time, I can go out and shoot, but that's about it. So here locally but uh danny and i are actually we're going to go to tack a uh, total archery challenge at the end of august here in michigan uh we oh, no. we got our tickets for that so we're going to be spending two days on the mountain and uh trying to not bust a bunch of arrows <laughs> so i've been i've been following you i'm a little jealous uh, of your your four mile runs there in the morning that's pretty awesome I'm proud of you well you, you know uh I'm getting ready for that. You know, I just you got you got to get your mountain uh, mountain legs. I mean, for what we've got for mountains compared to what y'all have got is, is totally different. But you know, for us, we're not used to climbing steep hills and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, Danny, he's been training a lot. I've been training a lot. So uh, we're we're getting ready. And uh, you know, you get a free free time next year. Come on over and, and climb some mountains with us and, and shoot some arrows. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, that'll be a lot of fun. Something we've been wanting to do and. And this year, a few of us were, were all um, ready to do it. And during the spring, during the time frame when we were going to start participating, everything shut down. Right, right. And right now, it's just too dang hot. I ain't going to do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can make a million other excuses, but it's just too dang hot for us down here. So to run up there and do one with you guys in June time frame in the 40s and 50s, that would be pretty nice. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. And uh, you know what? Mike's been running four miles. Uh, he's up to four miles. I walk about five miles a day uh, and just kind of, you know, it, it's all about being healthy. Uh, after being at ATA, talking with Pedro and uh, Dudley, it, it was all about being healthy and taking care of your, the one and only vehicle you have. So, you know, Mike and I are on that uh, healthy train. So And Donnie Vincent, he was another oh, one. Donnie Vincent, yeah, yeah, another one. And uh, Tim Andrus, the same thing. You know, all the PSE guys, the hunters and shooters. That's been the big push lately, so um, you know we're we're kind of trying to fall right in line behind them. Obviously, we're nowhere near where they're at, but uh, you got to start yeah. somewhere. So, but hey, yeah, you got, you got to start somewhere. You can't just wake up tomorrow and want to be there and expect to be there. It, 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 we didn't get out of shape overnight, and we're not going to get in shape overnight. So it's a, it's a process, and uh, it's life changing. It's not it's not uh, short term. You, you got to make it your lifestyle and. Um, Especially if you're, gonna, if you're doing what you want to do, um, there's nothing worse than, than sucking in, hiking up a mountain to get to get to an animal. But um, right, well, you know, it's, it's like you know, Danny and I, we, we started small and, and and you know, we're just progressing and, and just getting better every day. You know, and that's just what you got to do. It. I mean, if Danny and I can do it, anybody can do it. You, you know? know, and, and you're right, Bobby. It, it it becomes a it, it's it's two things. It's a lifestyle change, but most important importantly, that I found out is when you make goals, make them attainable. Don't make them so far out there that you get disgusted with yourself that you haven't lost your 85 pounds or whatever you're thinking of doing. Make little, little strides. You're in a marathon. You're not in a race. And once you hit the first one, it's like, oh, hey, I did that. Then the next one. And then the next one. And then that just rolls down. And matter of fact, kind of taking that health thing, years ago, the one and only Pete Shepley started PSE doing the little steps. And now look at you guys. We've been at ATA with you guys, and, and you guys are just blowing it away, getting the great engineering out there. And, and, you know, let's get into the bows that you want to talk about tonight because... He's got two of them behind him right there. I know, and, and that's the thing. It's like I'm, I'm excited to, to talk about the engineering guy, the guys that you have out there that seem, man, they seem awesome. Not going to lie. Yeah, we have, we have an incredible team down there. They, they continue to amaze me every year. Um, I don't know how many times I put a bow in my hand and I think, man, how could it get any better than this? And they manage to do it. Um, every year, they amaze me. Well, which one do you want to start with? Well, why don't we just go right to the top? I like it. 
it may as well just lead in with the with the new 2020. You see that? Absolutely. The, yep. That's the the Mach One, the Stealth Mach One, the carbon bow from PSE. Yep, the Stealth Mach One. Um, yeah, we've had the carbon carbon bow since 2016 now. Um, actually, we were the first one to introduce the carbon back in 1996. Not a lot of people know that, especially today's customers. Today's customers are a lot younger than the three of us on <laughs> on this show. You know, so they may not may not remember the carbon that we introduced back in 1996. But we did do the first carbon back then. Uh, there's been several several others since then, but we reintroduced carbon in our line back in 2016, um, and we've grown from there. We went from that carbon. Uh, stealth or the carbon uh, air to the carbon stealth to the stealth Mach one. We learned a lot about carbon manufacturing with the stealth model. Um, the first two carbons, oh, I will say, those were produced, designed by us, but produced for us from an outside source, a domestic source, by the way. But um, we learned a lot about carbon manufacturing, and we actually brought it in-house to Tucson at the factory last summer. Um, so this Mach 1 is produced right at the PSC factory here in Tucson, Arizona. Um, one of the big things that the biggest changes between the stealth and the Mach is the grip area right here. Um, when we did the second generation carbon, as you remember, we did away with the bridge handle, went with the solid handle design, much like you see this one here. But in order to maintain the strength, we had to really build it up in the grip area right here. But we learned a lot about the manufacturing process, learned how to how to strengthen it and keep it light or even lighter, actually. And that's how we ended up with the Mach 1. 32 inches axle to axle, 3.3 pounds mass weight. We have the small grip that was on the original carbon back from 2016. Um, we learned how to strengthen it, strengthen up the entire handle. Uh, we're able to produce this one in 80 pounds as well. The first two carbon handles, we couldn't do that. But we're able to give you guys the smaller grip section and offer 80 pounds. Um, the other change for this year is more of a laid back limb design so that it gives you a much better feel, smoother draw, a little bit deeper brace sight. It helps helps it point and aim a little better. Uh, we did lose a couple feet per second, but we're still in the high 330s, 340s, uh, low 340s. So still great speeds, but you're gaining uh, better feel, which they felt incredible to begin with. But now they feel even better, maintaining some good speed and uh, just uh, incredible feel all the way around. You know, last, when we were at ATA this past season, uh, that was the first thing. We didn't get to shoot that bow. We, we were just simply didn't have enough time to go through the entire lineup. But the one thing I noticed, you mentioned that grip, and that was the biggest change. That grip, to me, looks just like the ones, really, that are on all your other uh, metal metal riser bows, right? Yes. Yes, it's the same It's the same profile this way. So it's the same width as all of them are, but we were able to maintain the smaller profile this way as well. Much like the original carbon, I just happen to have one right here. I got all my junk on here, so you can't see the grip area. But <laughs> it's got you know, the same size and profile as the, the original Mach 1, or the original uh, carbon air. You know, what's the what's the weight of that? Because I, I think uh, the, the carbon ones are, are a great addition. If you're going to be heading out west, you're going to be going up and down mountains, putting it on the backpack, carrying it a long ways. Uh, even if you're walking in here in, in the Northwoods, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the weight of that bow comes in at... 3.3. 3.3 pounds. 3.3 pounds, and you can put that on the backpack, and you can walk a long ways with it and not worry about adding extra weight that you needed. Well, you know, the one thing I, I noticed uh, here last week when I was shooting, you know, and people say, well, what, what's a couple pounds? You know, uh, I had my target rig out and I had my uh, my Evo 28 out and they were, you know, had them both there on the, the uh, my bow stand and I, I was going to shoot them both. So I'm shooting my target bow. Then I picked the 28 up and shot it. And that target bow to me was so much pronounced heavier because I was shooting them both. And you, you really wouldn't think that, you know, two, three, four pounds is that big a deal, but it makes a huge difference. And then if you're packing, like, out where y'all are at, and you're, you're going deep in, those couple extra pounds, that means you could take maybe some extra water or something else that you really need out in the field. Yep, yep, definitely, definitely. Out here, I, I primarily hunt down in the, in the mountains of the, the southwest area. Here in southern Arizona, a lot of tall mountains. We hunt uh, two here, uh, out here, but 
our moms are not forgiving at all. And uh, I'm not in the best shape in the world, but uh, we can navigate these mountains pretty good. I, um, Pedro runs circles around us when, we're, <laughs> when he's down here with us. But um, yeah, any any bit of weight that you can cut from your overall gear and your pack um, that lets you take some more water or some more provisions or just any of your essentials, um, even if you do have everything that you need, but you can still cut some overall weight. It helps a ton. That moment you leave the truck, you might not notice it, but when you're on the way back in the afternoon, that's when those couple of pounds make a big difference. Well, it's it's also added poundage when you're packing out your game that you got. You know that added three, four, five pounds to that few a bunch of pounds of meat that you're backpacking as well. Right there, it's, uh, it helps. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's right. And, you take know, a look at that, at that carbon shelf moth one. The one thing I do want to I want to mention about that carbon, and and this is the same with all of our carbon since we introduced the, the carbon air. Is it is a single monocoque construction design. So this is one solid handle with an acoustic core inside of it, and that acoustic core, what it does is it absorbs any shock or vibration before it reaches the shell, so you don't feel anything in your hand. Um, you know, when, when it's 107 down here or, or you know, 17 degrees up where you are, this grip is going to feel almost the same no matter what the temperature is. That's another cool feature about it. When you have that aluminum handle bow in your hand and it's 17 degrees in a tree stand, you finally get a chance to grab that bow. It's like grabbing a block of ice, but you're not going to feel that with, the, with this carbon handle. You know, you talked about bringing all, all of that uh, back into the factory, uh, working on the carbon. You know, that that was a big deal for you guys to to make that commitment to bring that back in house. Uh, you know, since you've done that, I mean, I gotta imagine it gives you a lot more control over the process. Huge, huge. Um, it, it gives us one hundred percent control over the process. But the neat thing about it is, if and when we ever learn that we need to make a change or make a design change or a structural change, it's all right. I have a visitor with a visitor with me that you might hear or see in the video. Here. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> we like visitors. <laughs> uh, he's, he's been crying in the other room trying to get to me this whole time we've been chatting. <laughs> so he's sitting with me here now. But anyway, um, the, the great thing about it is, uh, you know, having complete control of the manufacturing process right in the factory is if, if we suddenly see a need for a change or a structural cha- change or, or just any kind of change, we can respond to it immediately and put that implement that change into the process on the spot. In the past, when we would learn something about it or we needed to make a change or something had to happen, we had to go to our, our supplier at the time, talk to them, um, teach them about what we want. They had to learn about what we wanted out of it and then implement the change at that point. Um, you know, we were still producing great bows back then, but with having the manufacturing process in-house in Tucson, we can react to those changes uh, much quicker. Um, plus, with Pete walking around the factory, he can walk in and make some some pretty quick changes with those folks. Um, have them uh, do whatever it is that he's looking for um, out of that bow, and we can do it immediately. Well, I got to imagine working with John Dudley too. Th- some of the things that he's uh, tinkering with there uh, that just lends to that as well, being able to make those changes and, and see them much quicker, like you're saying. Yeah, huge. You know, and that's one of the things you, you gotta you gotta say about PSE bringing it inside, giving you that quality control at at, at a moment's notice within the plant floor itself does wonders. Speaking yeah. from speaking from uh, experience of when you don't have control right at your fingertips, getting a change done, getting something taken care of that needs to be done quickly does not happen quickly. But with you guys pulling that inside, it's just a, a, a one more thing PSE's done to help them become one of the top bows manufacturers. And just so everyone that's watching knows, it was the carbon manufacturing process that we brought inside. All of our aluminum handles were already made here at our factory. Our looms, our cans, our table strings, all that was already made at our factory. Um, the only part of that process that we that we brought back inside was the carbon manufacturing. Exactly, and and I was going to touch on that with with the next bow you're going to show us is that you guys do it all in house, and that's one of the things. Whether it be aluminum, now carbon, whether it's your strings, it's all on the shop floor that you can. You know, Bobby Vargas has an issue, or or Pete Shepley's walking and he sees something he doesn't like, he's going to make a change, and it's going to happen. <laughs> That's, a, that's exactly right. Um, but luckily, um, you guys kind of touched on that at the beginning of the, of the show. We have a great team of engineers, and by the time that bow makes it to the dealer's shelf, 
we feel like we're pretty well perfected it. Uh, we don't forget about it. We don't think that we've gone as far as we can go. We're always trying to get better. But by the time a particular model makes it to, to your hand, we feel that we built the best thing for you at that point. And then at that point is when, we're all, is when we're always trying to figure out a better way to make it, uh, uh, any way to make it to save you a couple of dollars but maintain performance. Whatever it is, you know, we're always thinking about it. Well, talk a little more about the, the, the Stealth Mach 1. That's running the ECS cam system, correct? Right. Okay. Right. That cam is running on its fourth year now. It's just it's too good to change it. Um, the adjustability of it is incredible. The feel of it is incredible. Um, it, it feels so smooth. I've heard from so many people over the years since we introduced it that it feels like it's 10 pounds lighter than whatever other cam they were pulling at the time, but even some of our cams, too, but it feels like it's 10 pounds lighter than, than uh, whatever else they were pulling at the time. The 90% let off out of the box is incredible, and if that's too much for you, you can adjust it down to 85 or 80, and if you want less than that, we offer lower let off modules, too. You can do 65, 70, 75. So whatever let off you want, whatever holding weight you're looking for, I know with a lot of the, the target shooters are not necessarily looking for let off. They always want a specific holding weight back here that, that just makes them break that shot uh, as clean as, as they can. So you can find whatever holding weight or let off it is that you're interested in with that ECF cam. You know, it, it's almost like a, uh, I equate it to um, an, an AR platform style of rifle that you build and you can put add-ons on or change and manipulate things in a different way. Uh, that's the way you guys have set this stuff up is the, a person can truly build it the way they want it and where it fits their feel. Yeah, so many options with that, Cam. And, and none of those options compromise performance either. Um, in the past, with any of our cams that, that were so highly adjustable, they all performed well, but you would lose a little bit whenever you, you have such a wide range of adjustment. But with the ECS cam, you're still maintaining great performance and feel throughout the entire system from one draw length um, range of the spectrum to the other. Um, the neat thing about our about that ECS cam, too, is with any other uh, let-off adjustable cam that's out there, including some of ours in the past, when you went to the higher let-off option, you would lose some speed. Um, but without, with the ECS cam, you actually maintain the same speed or gain a foot or two by going to the 90% let-off. So it's completely cool. You know, so you don't lose any speed or performance staying in that feel good high let-off position of the cam. That's awesome, you know, and, and then we're, we're just talking about, you know, the cam system and the carbon bow, but you've got the NXT there as well, and how about we take a break, we'll come back, we'll talk about that bow next in the PSE lineup. All right, let's step outside, we'll take a break, we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back. Sitting over here in the UNJ cabin, Danny and I, we're talking all the way to Tucson, Arizona with Bobby Vargas PSC. Talking bows, talking all good things PSC. So we talked about the, the stealth, and so now I know you've got that NXT sitting there by you, so you want to talk about that next? I do, I do. The, the top of the line um, aluminum handle for us for this year are our Evo NXT series models. And right now we have them in four different options. We have a 31 a 33 and a 35 and a 35 is also offered as a short draw long draw version so you can get it with an se cam or with an ecs cam so we got the first four evo models and then at the apa show which most of you already know we introduced another one called the enough ambition um inspired by our new partner john dudley so that was, that's why I brought the this 33 to talk to you about. So this one is the Evo NXT 33. Um, it's all the same features with a 31 and 35. So we can we can talk about this 33 and cover them all. It's an all-new handle for this year. 
We went with a slightly longer handle again than we did last year um, because uh, one of the things we did was we laid the limbs back a little more this year than we had on the Evoke models last year. That's going to give you a uh, better feel on the shot. Um, it did increase brake heights a little bit, so it's going to add to your accuracy and stability. Um, still getting crazy good speeds on all models from between 335 and 345, between the 31 and the 35. Um, shoot. Uh, great, great new grip that we've always had. Um, color season options, black options, tan uh, sand options, uh, Monster Oak Breakup Country, um, just about any cool camo out there that you would want or cool color you want, we offer it. Got the same ECS cam system that we were talking about just a little bit ago. This will come to you at 90% let off right out of the box. Um, there's a little stop here on this side where you can adjust the let off to 85 or 80%. Um, just a phenomenal bow, great feel to it, great performance. Um, it, it's hard for me to sit here and tell you how good this bow is. You really need to get down to your dealer and, and put one in your hand and try it for yourself. Um, all of us all day long can tell you how good they feel, but until you put this bow in your hands and really feel the difference, that's, that's when it's going to really open your eyes. You know what, Bobby? But, uh, that, you're right. That What you just said is, is the magic words there. Don't take for what we say or what Bobby says or, or what you hear. Go shoot them. And that's what we tell everybody when they're out there and they say, oh, yo, you guys shoot. Well, you know what? Go shoot them. You see the videos of us shooting them. And that, that goes to tell you, we, we pick them up, we shoot them. Uh, we'll be heading over to, to Sunrise to, to look at the other bows that are over there to get our bows set up. And But it's like it's like a car, folks. You're going to pay some a uh, good amount of money for this product, but you want it to, to be right for you. Yep. So get out there, test drive it, test shoot it, and see how it works for you. Well, it, like in the video here, we, we, we shot these at ATA. And it, we say it every year. It's like, how much better can it get? But I was completely blown away at how these things felt in the hand after the shot, how smooth, how smooth they are. It, it's just, once again, it just, it, it, every year we keep saying, can it get better? And well, yeah, it does. And it just keeps getting better and better every year we, can, we show up. <laughs> when, when we introduced the Evolve Series four years ago, I couldn't imagine the bow getting any better than that. And then we went from the Evolve to the Evoke to the Evo Series. And the Evo NXT the next generation of Evolve is just just incredible. Um, one of the one of the few things that didn't change was was the grip. We mentioned that already. That that's just too good not to change. The cam is too good not to change. Uh, we did go to a solid rod system, as you can see there, instead of the flex yard system. We went to a solid rod, and we also offered. Uh, I don't know if you noticed when I was flipping it around, a secondary stabilizer mount. Yes, we got the, the standard up here that we're used to. But we also offer the secondary one down there. The real neat thing about that one is it lets you drop your stabilizer bar down. And you, and then since it's further away from your pivot point, it, it takes less weight to balance it. Basically, help, helping set that bow from and, uh, and, uh, and balance that bow during the shot, um, depending on your shooting style, you can, do, you can achieve the same results with less mass weight. So it kind of acts like a plumb bob because that center, gra uh, center gravity or center point is down lower. Exactly. Yeah. Plus, uh, the live wire custom bow strings that, that we're making in-house, uh, those things are incredible. Um, there's a little uh, area that's covered with camo curtains and we find around it called Area 51. We don't let very many people go back there to look at the process. But um, all, I, all I know about it, to be real honest, is just there's a bunch of great folks back there building some good products. It's all computer generated. Um, there, there's very little hand management in it. Um, it's all built off the computers. Uh, so that string that's made on Friday night at 3.30 is a, a, as good of a quality as it was on Monday at 7 a.m., if that makes any sense for uh, a production standpoint. But a great string, uh, just a great bow all the way around. Um, but like I said, you got to get down to your dealer, ask them for it. If you've been shipping these since last uh, October, November, so your dealers have them already now that a lot of the stores are starting to open up again. Um, if you can get into a store to, to get your hands on one, definitely, definitely try that out. You know, and that, that's another thing I do say about the PSE bows. There's a lot of these guys out there, you know, like to change their first thing to do is they switch out the strings and everything. And I typically don't. I shoot everything stock PSE because I want to I know from my 
my PSE person that's that's sending me this bow to to use, I want to know everything that they you know from top to bottom, front to back, that everything's been done and it's to their best of their ability. Like you said, whether it's four o'clock on a Friday or seven a.m. on a Monday, it's all put together with quality in mind and 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 value and everything that goes into that is for the customer and how it shoots. Exactly, exactly. It's neat to walk around the factory to see each and each and every department and whether and each one has they're all they all specialize in whatever department they're doing, whether it's film dip or color fusion or machining in the machine shop or, or whatever it is, each one of them puts their heart and souls into building that part as good as they can make it. Because if they don't make that part as good as they can make it, it doesn't it doesn't make a difference if the rest of it um is coming out good if your little part isn't working well. So every single part has to work well together and uh, as a team we're we're building great equipment to make sure that, that you guys have the best stuff that you can have. You know and that that that's talking about PSC and their employees and in taking their pride in the quality of work that they're producing to put into a product that they're going to ship out to customers all over the world. That's right. Built and ship right out of our factory. Yep, exactly. Well, anything else on the, on the, uh, the NXT that we need to cover? No, I think we covered it all. Um, we went through all, all the new features for this year. Okay. Um, uh, the only thing I can't stress enough is get your deal and try it. Well, I, I know it's... Uh, I tell you what, we went a little long in the last segment. Let's go ahead and take a break because I, I know you want to talk about the Warhammer and Dan, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. and Danny. Danny's just jacked up about that thing. He has ever, ever since we came back from ATA. So uh, let's take a quick break. When we come back. Uh, let's get into the Warhammer. Let's take a quick break. We'll step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSE archery has always dominated the speed category. Now. The most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back to the third segment of the show. And like we said before we went to a break there that uh, we wanted to talk about the Warhammer. Uh-huh. Danny, this this is this is your segment. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I was blown away when you guys introduced this on what I think it was eight, nine AM the morning of ATA. And uh yeah. it was I if I wasn't helping you guys out, I would have been right up there drooling over it but i got to drool over it later so but anyways uh you got to tell us about this warhammer because this is a phenomenal piece of equipment yeah we're pretty excited about about the warhammer i mean there's no there's no uh, it's not new to the industry folks have seen some really small and compact crossbows over the last couple of years but it's definitely definitely new to our product line uh super excited about it it's um uh, an ultra compact version of a, of a crossbow, um, just like you guys have seen, um, putting out some phenomenal speeds, 405 feet per second out of this thing. Um, in the in the relaxed position, I think axle to axle is only like 13 inches, and you get it to full draw, and it's sub sub eight inches axle to axle at in the cocked position. Um, the neat thing about it, uh, so many neat things about it, but with crossbows, uh, the crossbow trend has been growing uh, significantly over the last several years. Um, there's no doubt about that, and, and so we feel like we needed to to get our part in the market there for sure. Um, this is all produced right in the PSE factory. Once again, uh, all of our other crossbows, our price point crossbows, we do uh, source those out. But this particular the Warhammer is produced right here at the PSC factory. Um, that super light and compact design makes it fit anyone. So, I mean, if you guys you guys have kids and grandkids out there, and um, they can't pull the same bow that you can pull, um, but you can shoot that crossbow and hand it over to anyone else and have them have the same performance as you do. Um, Built in a lot of safety features with this one. We have an, an oversized hand grip to keep your hand really down low below the travel path of the string. string. 
Uh, we have some finger guards built in underneath the barrel to to add to that safety so you you can't get any closer up to the string when you're holding that front end You've got a forward trigger design and a compact stock so it really lets you get in tight so when you're in a in a ground blind tree stand if you have to move around it's very maneuverable and then even if you are you know, out here out west where you don't spend a lot of time in in a blind or a tree you know it's small and light enough where you can you know, strap it to your pack and you know get anywhere you needed to be pretty easily. Yeah, that's in a, that that stock. We're showing the video from us at ATA shooting this thing. That stock on that is is adjustable, correct? Uh, no, it's a fixed stock on that one. It Was does it, it does have yeah yeah adjustable cheek plate, but the length the length of pull is uh is fixed. Okay, so then as as we go forward, because I I, I want to go from top to bottom on this thing, because I dude I love this thing. This thing is that that scope on there. Um, is that that scope combination with what you got going there uh you're going to be at, at 400 and plus feet per second on this thing you're going to be able to reach out and touch something pretty good distance with practice definitely definitely depending on where you zero your scope i mean you can you can reach out reach out and touch something with that particular model there it's your, your standard 425 grain bolt that, that it comes with so it's not like it's an ultra lightweight bolt or, or anything like that. It's your 425 ring bolt at 405 feet per second. So you're producing some phenom- phenomenal speeds, great kinetic energy, but the accuracy that you're maintaining with it is is huge. Um, because it because of the design, it has such a short launch time, meaning from the time you pull the trigger to the time the bolt is off the off that barrel, it's so short. It gives you so little time to make a mistake. I know a lot of guys are going to shoot this off of a, off of shooting sticks or something like that when you're on a blind. Um, so you're going to you know, maintain some really good accuracy. And those kind of situations are probably 40 yards and under anyway. But if you are going to be doing any kind of spot and stock kind of thing, and you and you're in a situation where you have to shoot freehand, you know, get a rest if you can. But if you have to shoot freehand, you're going to be you're going to be super surprised with the accuracy you're going to maintain at long distance because the launch time is so short that by the moment you pull that trigger, the bolt is off that barrel so fast, you're going to be striking behind your pin, meaning wherever your aiming dot is, that's where your bolt's going to hit right when you and, go. And this scope is a lighted scope that comes with it? It is a, it is a lighted scope. It lights up in green and or green or red uh, with most, multiple intensity. And it's a multi-reticle scope, so you're going to have multiple points of impact within the, the scope itself. And it comes with the crossbow. comes with both, comes with the quiver, comes with the cocking strap. And then uh, if you want it, a mechanical cocking mechanism, you can buy that as an add-on accessory. You know, this 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 whole package you got going, uh, we got a question. is What is the MSRP for this bad boy? $14.99. Say that one more time. Fourteen ninety nine. Fourteen ninety nine. Okay. And and that put you know what, folks, when you say that you hear that, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so but you know what? That's putting it into the same caliber and range of other ones that are out on the market. And trust me, I've shot this one, Mike shot this one, Ken shot this one, and the quality uh is there and you gotta like we said, again, go out and shoot it. Don't don't listen to us, don't listen to Bobby, don't listen to Make up in your own mind to get out there, and if you're going to get into crossbows, you hear about other brands, you hear about this, give them all a try. Uh, again, buying a car, you want the best one for you. The thing that really impressed me about it, Bobby, when I shot, the very first thing I noticed is that trigger breaks just like glass. I mean, it, there's there's something in that trigger there, the mechanism. It just, uh, it, when it goes off, there's not a long trigger pull like other ones that you see. It's it's very short, and it it breaks hard. It's short and, it's short and crisp. But that's pretty yeah. nice. But a lot of other crossbows have a really long trigger travel, and then once you reach the point of engagement, even at that point, it it um, takes a little to to get it to go off. But this one's uh, short and crisp. I think you, you'll like it. Oh, you will. I trust me. And that alone, like you said, a long tr- uh, engagement and, and trigger pull that also adds to uh, people making movement uh, inaccuracy so with with that the one that y'all have put on the warhammer it's just going to improve that accuracy and this warhammer is available in all black uh mossy oak breakup country and uh true timber strata there you go so another one you, you've seen it here you hear bobby talk about it you hear we talk about it but get out and try it get to your dealer see if they got them in uh are we shipping these to the stores now we're shipping. I was about to mention that we, we did lose nine weeks of production over this whole COVID lockdown. 
we tried to we have made several phone calls to to the highest uh, the, the people above us in the state and they wouldn't let it stay open during this uh, shutdown we lost nine weeks of production but um, tomorrow start our fourth week fourth week back uh, we built lots of warhammers we built lots of nxps uh, so we're we're back up and running and shipping again that's awesome I'm you know what I'm excited to hear that another company is along with businesses are getting back on their feet getting production back getting people back out there working I mean it is so good to hear instead of uh, hate to say it but being locked down so it's good to hear yeah. that PSC's back up and running I'm sure Pete's back in the back in the uh, back there making sure everybody's working hard and uh, doing oh. they're doing their job yeah yeah Oh. He's still there every day, uh, making, making sure we're building the best product we can. We just had a question come in here about the Warhammer. Is there a sling uh, for freehand stability when, when shooting this? We do have a sling option. It doesn't come with one, uh, but we do have a, a real life neoprene non clip sling that you can get from it. Um, there, there you go. Get With an added sling, you get the freehand option, and it helps out. Uh, once again... <laughs> Things forever with our crossbows. We thought it was something that everyone wanted with their crossbow. And, and after shipping, I don't know how many thousands of bows, we found out customers, most customers, weren't keeping the swing. We figured we'd keep, keep the selling price down and pull the swing out. And if you wanted to add it, then we'll, we'll make it available to you. Really? Uh-huh. I, I, I like a sling on my crossbow because I, I, I carry it, it in. Out. Yeah, I'm throwing it on my back and carrying it in and out. Wow. So, so do I. So do most of us in the factory. And when we found out from a lot of our dealers that most of their customers weren't using the sling, it was kind of mind blowing. But um, that, that another another uh, good point there is how we can listen to our customers and, and their demands and and be able to react to them. You know, what, that that is another great point is reaching out to your dealers, finding out what you're learning from the dealer, from the customer that they can send back to you and everybody up there or out there in, in Tucson and have a meeting, talk about it, and, and you find things out like that. It's awesome. We do. We do, we do rely on our, our retailers quite a bit. You know, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are today. And um it wasn't for the people buying from those retailers, we wouldn't be where we are today. So we owe it to them to listen to them and give them what they want. You know, something I want I want to talk about. Uh, we kind of talked about before the show started is uh, something that I used to do a long time ago. Haven't done a lot of it lately. Is bow fishing, and I started digging through the PSC uh, webpage. And you know, I, I know you guys had bow fishing rigs, but I didn't realize that you had four different models to choose from. We have a, we have a lot of bow fishing models to choose from. Um, entry level recurve models uh, with the Kingfisher. We've got. Uh, the mud dog we've got the discovery two and within all of those they have multiple package options or you can just buy the bow by themselves and um build up the packages however you want but one stop shop right in our boat fishing section our boat fishing category just about any style of boat fishing you want to do um but in deep water fishing um we got it and we have the the light bolts to do it the heavy bolts or arrows to do it um, anything and everything in bow fishing all jam packed into one bow fishing category from our product line. Is that something that you're you're seeing? Uh, is there a swing up in that? Is it staying pretty stable? I mean, I know we used to do it quite a bit back when my kids were younger, but uh, since they've grown up, you know, I've kind of gotten away from that. You know, we, we noticed about six or seven years ago, maybe even a little bit longer than that, bow fishing just really started to spike and it was growing and growing and growing. It hasn't leveled out yet, it's still growing. Um, I think a lot of people that want to do it have some equipment in their hands now, and now we're all, those guys are upgrading to better equipment with us now. So, um, you know, when uh, when we were talking to our dealers once again, and they were telling us how we're getting our butts kicked on on bow fishing equipment, we sat down and listened to them about some of the features and options that they wanted out of a boat fishing bow, and we were able to give it to them. We sold quite a few, and we're still selling quite a few, but. And now those guys that bought one or two a few years ago are, are ready to upgrade and get into the next level um, in bow fishing. Um, so we have those um, new boats to offer as well. You know, I, I've always told people, I said, and I'm going to put this nicely, I'm going to say it, it's the most fun you can have on the water at night with your clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's a blast. Yeah, it is. It is so much fun. I mean, if, if you've never done it, you know, get out and try it. Um 
the, the, when we go and do it, we don't have a lot of water down here in southern Arizona, so we do have to travel to do it. So I don't get to do it as often as I really like to. But, man, once you get on the water, um, it's like time stands still. You're, yeah. you're just, it's, yeah, it's so much fun. It, um, get out and try it, that's for sure. And then right now, it's the middle, middle of seasons. You no know, turkey seasons are all wrapping up right now. We have several months away before uh, the fall deer seasons come along. So there's some dead time. It doesn't mean that you don't, doesn't mean that you stop ha- uh, shooting your bow. Mm-hmm. You know, you get a bow fishing bow, you're still hunting. You're still, you're still playing with your bows and arrows. You're just you know, stay active, stay with it. Keep it, shooting, it's, whatever. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to do either and we always used to say the winner is not the person who shoots the biggest fish the winner is who shoots the smallest fish you know because yeah. it's so much tougher to hit something in the water number one with a refraction but also yep. the smaller the target obviously the harder it is to hit absolutely absolutely right so I'm sure it's fine though so get to your local dealer, check them out. They've got the bow fishing rigs there. And now, and now with these cool nights, what what actually helps is these cool nights right now is knocking the bugs down. Yeah, because it, it's, it's huge. It's, it's huge because if you go out there, it, it's gonna get into July and August when when the the warm nights kick in here. It's gonna be bug fest, as you can see in the videos that we're showing. You can see the bugs in front of the lights. So you know now's a good time. Get to your dealer, check them out get out of the on the water absolutely it's it's a it's a blast i i got danny out i don't know it's was been that? a it's been a few years since four, we got out we had a blast four or five was, years you know it was fun so you know and like you said it's timeless you know before you know it you, you go out at dusk you get on the water and before you know it it's the sun's rising you're like wow yeah. that, that night Oops. Went, you know went quick <laughs> that, that that was my experience too we got out at night um uh, we were with a friend who had a nice boat fishing boat, and as soon as we got on the water, we were starting to shoot fish. And before we knew it, the sun was coming up, and we were on the water for nine hours. And we didn't even really realize it. it was so much fun. So, so tiring, too. Yeah, you come you come strolling in, and it's a crack of dawn, and all of a sudden you've got to explain to the family why you've been out all night. You, 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 <laughs> you, show, you show them all the fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were on the water all night. Yeah, right. No, no, really, I was. Look at all these fish. Right. <laughs> So one thing to keep in mind, though, too, you mentioned that a little while ago about the the cooler temperatures right now. When it's cooler, the fish are closer to the surface too, and the warmer yep. it gets, the deeper it's going to get. They're going to be harder to hit, harder to see. So get out and do it soon. Exactly. You know, speaking of, we, we, we've talked about the Mach One, the NXT. Uh, we've talked about the Warhammer. We've talked about your bow fishing. Uh, if somebody wants to go check out the website, can you give us the website as to where they can go check these all out? And I'm glad you mentioned that because we just recently revamped our website uh, a week ago tomorrow. So it's a, it's a lot better better looking, a lot easier to navigate. Um, the entire product line is up there now. Um, we just had bows on it last year, but now you can see the entire product line, accessories, arrows, gear, all the bow fishing stuff. You can see the, the D3 bow fishing bow there too at www.pscarchery.com. You can see the entire product line there. You know what? And you like, page, you'll see me on the heritage page. I finally made my my website debut there this year after all these years. <laughs> Did you really? You fight you. you, it, you put on, it put me on an entry level recurve, but hey, I, I made the I made the website finally. Well, what I want to know is when are they going to have Danny on for those short draw bows? <laughs> I want I want to be on for the Warhammer. I'm not gonna. Lie. I'm, you put me on for a crossbow. I'm, I'm all in. Uh, so you know what? Uh, like you said new revamped website we got to talk about arrows yeah why don't we do that why don't we take a break we come back and we'll uh we'll wrap up the show we'll talk about the arrows and we got a couple of questions for bobby and uh we'll go from there all right we're gonna step outside we'll be right back after this acceleration is part of pse's dna pse pioneered the speed movement Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSCArchery.com. All right, last segment of the show, we've talked about bows, we've talked about bow fishing, we've talked about the crossbow, but what they've all got is an arrow. Yeah, exactly. And a couple quick questions before we get into which 
PSE had arrows, and they did have arrows, but now they're making a resurgence in the arrows again. Uh, two questions I got for you. Uh, one, do you shoot, this is you personally, Bobby, do you shoot a mechanical or a fixed broadhead? Yep, there you go. <laughs> there you go. It, big, big fan of both, but over the over recent years, um, I'm a bigger fan of mechanical. Um, the, the performance I get out of the mechanical heads, um, the speed that we're producing with the bows lets you get lets you shoot a mechanical head with such large cutting diameter. Um, we all know that you know, the animals die from hemorrhaging, so the, the bigger the hole, the, the more blood loss, and the, the quicker they're going to fire. So I'm I'm a big fan of mechanicals. Okay. Now, the, okay. So, with that being said, the Warhammer, can you do a mechanical out of that one as well? Yes. Yeah. Oh. You, you have to. Some mechanicals might need some need some modifications, or, um, depending on on how they deploy. Um, some of them might need an extra O ring if it's that type of a mechanical. There are a lot of crossbow specific mechanicals out there. I know Swacker makes a crossbow mechanical, and um, I shoot I shoot those out of my compound bow as well. Um, Vortex broadhead that I've really good luck with. Uh, I shoot those out of my my vertical bows as well. Um, yeah, you, you you can shoot mechanicals out of a out of a crossbow. Okay, okay yeah, I, I was gonna say you you definitely got to use the crossbow mechanical clips or O rings that they do come with them. I I know that. I just didn't know with with the Warhammer shooting at what it was if, if there was any more. But I think you're that'd be good. Then just make sure you're safety, safety, safety. Make sure you're shooting the appropriate broadhead mechanical for if you're shooting a a, a crown pound bow. And there is a difference for a crossbow. Don't mix those up. Right. You'll know you'll know it wrong. <laughs> Guarantee. Well, you don't want to run the hard way. <laughs> exactly. So that leads us. So um, there was one other question. Do you shoot a heavy FOC? Um, you know what? To be real honest with you, I don't I don't pull with FOC. I, I find the, the arrow that's that's the correct spine weight for me. And then the thin bad bundle of arrows, as long as that arrow is is spine consistent throughout the batch. That's what works well for me. So when I'm building building a set of arrows, my arrows um, for a typical deer setup are between 390 and 410. Uh, if I get lucky enough to get an elk tag, um, I'll add a little more weight to it and pump it up around that 420 to 430 range. But um, very honestly, I'm, I'm more concerned with the total arrow weight. Um, I get, I've been getting really good performance with putting an arrow together that way and not even not even really being too overly concerned with FOC. I know that that came up. Um, there was a resurgence in, in FOC over uh, FOC discussion over Facebook recently. But to answer your question, I, I don't really fool with FOC. It, it's, it, I'm not really personally finding a super great advantage. Right, ex- exactly. And, and, and I've seen you post on Facebook your shooting ability. And trust me, uh, you probably could whittle a stick and shoot just as good with that is because uh, I've seen you shoot and it's like the guy can shoot. So like you said, uh, which leads us into the arrows. Tell us about what's going on with PSC and the carbon force arrows. Well, that, that, that was a good segue into it. And, I'll, and then I'll also explain a little bit more about my arrow build. So, you know, and what it is I do to get, when you get performance out of it, but no matter how, much time you spend building your arrow, how much no, no, um, thought you put into building your arrow, it doesn't do any good if your arrows aren't good. Um, so we've had our own line of carbon force arrows over the years. Um, radial X weave arrows have been by far the most popular arrows that we've had. The current um, X weave arrow that we have is called the HD Hunter and HD Hunter Select. And so those are your standard, um, I call them your standard, you know, carbon arrow, hunting carbon sized arrow. Um, they're grain weight matched. They're spine consistent throughout the bundle. Um, very strong arrow, um, very economical arrow. You're going to get, you know, probably the best arrow for your money out of that, out of those radio X weave. But the, one of the ones that is kind of a, a sleeper and probably the best kept secret that we have is the, uh, PSD Extreme Penetration Arrow. This arrow is going on its third year with us now. It's a it's a smaller diameter shaft arrow with an insert outsert um, system on, on it. There, um, these arrows here are so are super spine consistent throughout the bundle. So that's where you're going to notice you're going to get 
the best performance out of your arrows. If your arrows are not fine, consistent, um, you're not going to get very good roots out of them. A lot of people won't know this, to be real honest with you, but the more fine consistent your arrow is, the better your roots and, and performance is going to be. Um, and um, when you're looking at ads and you're looking at our catalog, a lot of the big po bullet points that you see is straightness because it's easy for us to understand straightness. And in our mind, the straighter the better. And yes, that is true. But it doesn't matter how straight it, that arrow is, if your arrows aren't spine consistent throughout that bundle. And that's what you're going to find throughout our entire product line. The spine consistency is incredible. But on top of all of that, you need to make sure that you have a good steering system on there too. And I like a lot of helical on mine. I use the Arizona Easy Fletch Mini jig and it puts a real hard right helical on there. And I've tested a lot of veins out in the, uh, in the market, a lot of veins styles. AAE by far makes the best ones out there. And this one is the uh, Max Hunter Stealth. It's a lower profile design, uh, 3.2 or 2.9 inches so with a lower profile. You get the same uh, overall surface steering area out of this out of this um, vein with the length of it, but because it's lower profile, it makes it quieter. You get less drag. Your downrange um, groups are you're going to maintain good downrange groups, and more importantly, good downrange velocity because I don't have as much of a parachute effect back here. It's not slowing that arrow down as much, so my downrange um, velocity um, maintains it maintains a lot of downrange velocity there. You know, and then and that leads, you just kind of, I think you just explained uh, one of the questions that just came across was, what is your process for building an arrow vein preference? It sounds like you tested multiple veins and multiple helicals to come up with what Bobby likes to shoot. I, I have, I have, and, and mine isn't the only way to do it, but I will tell you, I did spend a lot of time over the years finding this combination. Um, and it worked really, really well for me. I tried the high profile veins and they work, they do work. I tried uh, straight veins, I tried offset veins, I tried other helical, the helical on them. But um, as long as you have some kind of a helical or some kind of an offset to spin that arrow, you're gonna you're gonna get good food. But the more helical you can put on there, the more that arrow's gonna want to. The quicker the arrow's gonna spin as soon as it gets off the string, and the sooner that arrow's gonna stabilize. Um, it's gonna help them help maintain your your broadhead groups. You're gonna get uh, good points of impact. Maintain good points of impact with your field points and broadheads by putting by giving it a good steering system. You know, you're talking about building an arrow. Uh, the Arizona Easy Fletch uh, Mini. That's the one that I've, I've got here. And there's just something real satisfying. It's almost like reloading uh, for for people who shoot rifles or pistols. But for an archer, building your own arrow, there's something really satisfying about fletching your own arrows and, and building that combination that works for you. Uh, yeah. I don't know any other way to describe it, but that's you know, it's just real satisfying. What what's it, your it, what's your ahead. what's your opinion? Uh, what length uh, veins do you have? These are these are pretty much right at three. Okay, uh, you're you're right there then. So then you got the four, the threes, the the smaller ones. What, what would you say about somebody that you know? The is that another tested thing? You shot smaller length veins to the to the threes to maybe a four. You tested them, and that was the best one for you. I did. I did. This was the best one for me. That the the short, the shorter, higher profile veins that are out there that that are designed for string broadheads, they, they did work well. Um, but I did find that with this particular combination, um, I was I was able to maintain better field point and broadhead accuracy. Uh, meaning my point of impacts with field point and broadhead stayed the same with this setup compared to any other setup, whether I went with a, a shorter vein with as much helical or a shorter vein that was smaller. Um, I tried a 1.9s. I tried the, the two and a quarter inch uh, max owners. Um, I tried to any, any combination there in between. And this particular combination for me personally um, seemed to work out the best. Um, it's, they're quieter because you don't have that big, giant, tall, uh, high-profile vein that's fluttering downrange. So it's quieter on the shot. It's quieter downrange. The animal doesn't doesn't hear, hear it coming. Um, because it's a little bit longer than some of those short, high-profile veins, you're still maintaining the same overall surface area to displace the wind, to displace the air, to get to grab that arrow and start spinning it. 
Um, and plus, because it's not so tall, you're not creating that big that big parachute effect uh, back here. So you're going to you're going to maintain better downrange velocity too. I mean, luckily where we are, we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of arrows. We have a lot of veins. We have machines. We have we have a had the indoor range to do it. So hopefully, I'm saving a lot of you guys a lot of time and money. And I would just, I, mean, I wouldn't think twice about just diving right into that setup right there, feeling 100 confident with the performance I was going to get. You know, and that's another nice thing Mike and, and I do, and, and obviously you do, is we can build a set of arrows. And, and you know, you get that whim that says, "Hey, you know what?" I'm thinking about, you know, I'll fletch up maybe a half a dozen of uh, a three inch vein or a smaller vein or a tall, you know, and then go shoot them and say, well, how does that shoot? It, 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 it's again, it's like patterning for turkey, right? Out of your, what, what gun? What does your gun like to shoot? What, like what shoot? does your bow like to shoot? What does your bow like to shoot? And right. it comes down to, they, you, you have your bow, you've got your arrows, you, you max, you put them together, and then you, you go and you fine tune it with the fletching. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things, one of the questions that was asked. And I know the engineer of the arrows, the engineer of the bows, you can put them together, but then you got the luxury of fine tuning them. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't take much. The, the bows nowadays, um, we're learning that these bows are so much easier to tune than some of the bows from years and years ago. That ECS cam system is so easy. And even if you didn't get into an ECS cam bow, the three B cam on the on the bow madness models, on the Fentress models, the uh, the finger cam on our on our uh, stinger model bow, um, the the spin cam on our brute bow. I mean, everything from top to bottom, everything is getting so much easier to tune. It's it's so much easier to put together a bow and arrow combination anymore. Really, all all you need to do is go to the, the CSC website, go to the arrow page, look at what what uh, um, draw length you're shooting, or what I mean, what arrow length you're shooting, what your your draw weight is, and we'll tell you exactly which arrows to get. And, and you can buy a, an arrow that's already fleshed, and if you don't want that fleshed arrow and you want to build your own with something like that, you can buy any of our arrows of uh, bare shaft as well. You can build them up like that and, and get that good combination for you. You know, in, in talking about, uh, you know, building your own arrow and, and the spine charts and all that, uh, for people on may, may be watching or listening uh, to the podcast version of this, talking about spine, uh, explain to, to some of those people what we're talking about with spine and why that's important. So the spine of the arrow is basically how the arrow flexes like that. And the, the, the heavier the spine, the less it's, it's going to flex, and the lighter the spine, the, you know, the more it's going to flex. So basically, you, we offer a lot of different spine options. There are five options, basically, because we're, we're all so unique. We're all different. We have different arrow lengths. We have different draw weights. So not, every, not one arrow is going to work with every single bow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're going to shoot out of that bow, but to get the absolute best performance, you want to get the arrow that's matched to your setup. So you need to find out how long your overall arrow length is, you know, from the throat of the knock to the to the end of the shaft, not not measuring your point, but just further out to the end of the shaft. That's the total arrow length. And then once you figure that out, you figure out how many pounds you're pulling. And then once you have those two those two points, you go to the arrow chart and it'll tell you exactly what size arrow is gonna work best out of your bow. I promise you you're gonna you're going to realize uh, the difference in performance going that way. And I will say this too: always err on the stiff side. If you're on the, if you're looking at the chart and you're and you right in between one shaft size to the other, always go to the stiff side. It's all, it's, it's safer for one, but uh, it's going to stay with them. It maintain great performance. There you go. So there you go. Go check it out over at the updated website over at pscarchery.com. Uh, Tony Thompson says here he's actually he's got. He's been watching Bobby shoot on YouTube and is awesome, he says. And, Bobby, what would you recommend for a person new to crossbow? Um, which one of the PSE line would you suggest for somebody like that? Um, you know, just any, one of the, any one of the crossbows in the product line is going to work out well. It's going to do what we need to do. I guess what we need to know what kind of price point we want to we want to be within. Um, another thing we want to know is what to, what's going to be your, your primary use for it. Um, knowing some of those things to help. But I think probably in our product line, the one bow that I would recommend that's uh, going 
going to be a great all-around bow, and it's not going to break the bank, is the family speed. The family speed that's running up there in 385 feet per second, something like that, comes in a complete package. Um, right out of the box, you're getting a multi radical illuminated scope, you're getting bolts, you're getting a quiver, um, you're getting the complete package um, right out of the box. And I, I think that Fang HD is, is the one I would recommend. So there you go. Check it out. Get over to the website. Get to a PSE dealer. Sh- check it out. Shoot it. Make sure you like it. But like Bobby said, uh, there's a couple different factors that the uh, pro shop's going to ask you. Price point, what you're going to be going after, and then they'll be able to get you a test drive in one of the, the models that they have there, and, and hopefully you like it. Yeah, you know, and, and shoot them all. You know, that way, uh, you know, you might think you're in, in, you want a certain range, and all of a sudden you find out, man, I got to have that Warhammer. <laughs> you know? That's what I was going to say. Danny didn't already tell you on the Warhammer a little while ago, then. And uh, that thing HD is the next next one I would take a look at for sure. Yeah, yeah, that, that thing is uh, to me it's just simply amazing uh, the, how narrow it is and and how fast that thing shoots. So I'll tell you what, we're we're getting here to the end of the show. I think we'll go ahead and wrap up the podcast portion of the show uh, f- for those of you who are listening in. But uh, we'll we'll hang out here online for just a minute afterwards, and uh, we'll we'll have maybe a question or two pop in that we'll answer. But uh, for those of you on the podcast, that'll do it for us this week. Remember, go over to our, our social media pages, over to Twitter, over to YouTube. Give us a like, give us a follow, uh, share our, our show if you don't mind. And if you're listening to us over on iTunes, give us a review over there. That helps us out as well. So that'll do it for us this week. We'll be back again next week. You all take care. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Buck Bait, Better the Hunt, Rebel 6 Rubs and Seasonings, Easy Cut, Limb Walker Game Club, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Packer Mac, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Scent Blocker, Scent Lock, Copper John, and Stanislavski Release Aids. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.